If you want to undervolt your RX 7700 XT to get more FPS, lower temperature, lower power consumption, lower noise, and even reduce the coil whine that some of these cards have, well, this is the right video for you. So welcome back at I'm watching PSUs. Now, what we have here today is a Sapphire RX 7700 XT. However, this tutorial will actually work for every single RX 7700 XT out there. So it doesn't matter the brand, it can be a reference AMD one, it can be Sapphire Nitro, whatever. Any single card this will work for. Now this will actually even work for the RX 7700 non-XT and the 7800 non-XT if you change around the settings a little bit because they share very much with the architecture, okay? So I say we go straight into Windows and we start tweaking because these cards actually undervolt better than Nvidia cards, which is great. But before we do that, promise me one thing. If the video will end up being helpful, you will drop a like and maybe subscribe to the channel for more. I also have CPU tutorials, by the way. So let's get going. Now you will need two pieces of software, Heaven Benchmark and MSA Afterburner, and both of them will be linked down below in the description. So first thing we wanna do is uncheck the full screen option and start having benchmark right here then we press the windows key and in overlay we open up msa afterburner now on afterburner we want to go into settings and make sure you check the voltage control voltage monitoring control and you also want to make it start with windows and start as an icon but we will do that in the end okay so check these two buttons hit apply hit ok and here we are now as you can see we are now running at 2600 megahertz and 2250 on the memory and we are under full load as you can see doing around 300 frames per second on the corner which you cannot see what we want to do is first off we want to max out the power limit okay and now we want to overclock our memory now the reason why we're putting an offset on the memory is because it's basically free performance now, if you want to just copy my settings, I will first tell you what to do if you want to just copy it. And then I will explain how to find the best maximum for yourself, okay? So the first profile is going to be mostly for performance and an overall balanced experience. So a bit less power consumption, a bit less temperature and more performance. 2500 on the memory right there. And now click on Curve Editor, okay? You will bring this guy up. And now over here, you want to go on here, click on this button right there. And on the left, you want to bring it all the way up to 2900. It doesn't have to be exactly 2900. It can be 2893, for example. And now you want to get the lower one. And this time, bring this one all the way down to 1000. Now close this up. Hit apply. And here we are. So if you want to just copy my settings, the tutorial is pretty much over. So again, remember your promise, drop a like and a sub, and I will show you how to make it start with Windows. So you want to save it into one, click one, click apply, check this icon, go into setting, make it start with Windows, start to minimize, hit apply, hit OK, and you're good to go. You can just minimize this. You will have to keep this software open, uh, well, in the background, and you will be plenty fine. However, if you want to know what we did here and how to do it better for yourself, thanks for still watching. Let's go ahead. This is your voltage. This curve right here is your voltage. So the lower this slider go, the lower your temperature and power consumption. However, even the best cards will not really go lower than 950. 955 to 950 will be your absolute maximum you can do, okay? So you might want to lower this one a bit more, but generally, if you lower this a bit more, you can put your core clock less high, if it makes sense. So for example, a good efficiency under volt would be 950 at 2800, for example. That works for my card, and it's actually very good for temperatures, like it's running cold pretty much as you can see. But if you want more performance on the flip side, you might want to try going all the way up to 3000 over here, which generally is the maximum. Um, pretty much no card can go higher than 3000, to be honest. So yeah, you want to try that. For that, you probably will need a bit extra voltage over here. So you generally will need like around 1000. And as you can see from my card, that's also stable. If you're doing these adjustments um, without following my advice, so just testing it out for yourself, you want to test it out properly and having benchmark is not the right benchmark, okay? So you want to just play some games and see if it crashes. If it crashes, don't panic. Just lower the core clock a bit. So you either lower this one a bit or you get this one a bit higher 
until you find your sweet spot, okay? And that's how you do it. And for all of this, you need the power limit to the maximum. You can also increase the memory a bit more. Now, on some cards, if you experience just a black screen as soon as you apply these settings, the problem is the memory. So I would advise just not to touch the memory and just max out the power limit. And then just, yeah, just do your normal undervolt, as you can see. So for example, 2900, 1000, hit apply, no memory offset, and this is good. However, on the flip side, if this works for you, if even 2500 works for you, you can try to push it higher. So most cards will be able to do 2600 easy. But as you can see, my card cannot. And we got a green screen, but even there, we don't have to panic. You just wait and the screen will come back on. And if it doesn't come back on, you just turn off your PC and boot it on again. It's all normal when undervolting slash overclocking. So you wanna be extra safe, just follow my settings, but you can play around with them a bit. Maxing out the power limit is the key part and no, it won't actually result in more power. It will just free up the card. So with all this said guys, if you liked the video this far, please drop a like and a sub and I will see you guys in the next one for any questions. I'm done in the comments and I have many more undervolt tutorials for different CPUs, GPUs, and even PC builds. As you can see, PC is booting back up. See you in the next one guys. Bye.